Hi, welcome back. If you didn't see the previous video, we're talking about these Tuya based smart energy metering plugs. And well, we're, this video continues where we left off in the previous video. So if you haven't seen that one, maybe uh, go check that out first. So last video, we stopped when we had our little Tuya based energy measuring plug thingy running a very basic configuration of ESP home. So this video, we're going to put in the final configuration. Then we're going to do a little bit of calibration with an external meter. And then we're going to be adding it to home assistant and well, use some of the data this plug outputs to make some nice graphs within home assistant. To start off, I'm again going to refer you to the associated blog post in the description below, and it will have all the code and other text fields you need to follow along. So now that our plug is online, we want to assign it a, well, I want to assign it a static IP address and a recognizable DNS name. That way it will always be on the same IP and it just makes integrating it into ESP Home and Home Assistant a lot easier. But this will also be where things will differ for a lot of people because my home runs on all MicroTik or router board equipment but you might have something else like Ubiquiti or uh, something from Netgear, Asus or Google Home Wi-Fi or whatever else. So I'm going to show you how to do it in MicroTik, but you'll have to figure out how to do that on your own equipment. In my case, I go into the DHCP server and look up the IP lease the smart plug was given. Then I click on the button to make that static, and then I change that IP to one I want the plug to have outside of my dynamic DHCP range. Now, every time this specific plug will ask for an IP from the DHCP server, it will get assigned this static IP instead of one from the dynamic range. Next, we go into the DNS server and we configure a static DNS name for that same IP. This will also be the name Home Assistant and ESP Home will use to connect to the plug. In my case, this is going to be Smart Energy Meter Plug 13, so I call it energy underscore 13 dot local. Okay, we're done on the router, so now we go back to the ESP Home integration page within HASIO. There, we select to create a new device, but this time all the data we fill in doesn't matter except for the name. As the name, I again use the energy underscore 13 name as we just set up. Once done, open up the configuration file and paste in the actual configuration you can find on the blog page. This pre-configures everything and we just need to change some values. First, there is the data for your Wi-Fi network and passwords again. You can copy those from the temporary configuration you made earlier. But then we are also going to change all the names referring to the energy plug. In my case, I change everything from energy underscore temp to energy underscore 13. The easiest way to do this is to hit Ctrl F and search for energy underscore temp. Each hit needs to be changed. There are some other options you can configure in the code. For instance, I have the plug set up so that when it turns on, the relay is automatically on. But you might want to have that set up differently. But using ESP Home, it's very easy to change that and just upload it with the new firmware. Once your configuration is done, ESP Home should automatically list the plug as online. This is because we configured its IP and DNS name earlier, so it just finds it on the network. Now we can just hit upload, it'll compile the configuration we just made and upload it to the plug and we're done. So if we now check back on the web page, we can see that there's a lot more data listed. Here we can, for instance, now test the little button that's on top of there to see if that comes through to the web page. 
So now comes a partially optional step, but I do encourage everyone to do so. And that is calibrating this specific meter. All of the resistors and metering equipment that's in these things have kind of the same value, but not quite. So using an external meter like, uh, hold on, like these that I like to use, and they're kind of expensive, but these are very good and come pre-calibrated out of the factory. We can set up this one to basically measure about the same. And then we know that everything we're reading is all well, fairly correct. We do this by using an external load, and this can be anything from an LED lamp or well, whatever else that draws at least like 20, 30 watts and does so constantly. The way to change the values is by checking the external meter, seeing what it says, and then taking off 0 0.8 watts, because that is what the, this meter itself uses, and then adjusting the current resistor and voltage divider values to match with the external meter. It takes a little bit of fiddling, but once that's done, this meter should be calibrated forever and well, we can move on. During all this reboot, the meter and especially the relay might click a few times. That's normal and you don't have to worry about that. So now that calibration is complete, we're going to add the specific plug to Home Assistant. I do advise you, especially if like me and you bought like 18, and I appreciate using my affiliate links. So if you did that, thank you. Um, I advise you to label the plugs so you can keep them apart later on. And I also keep a little list in some notepad, um, which plug is measuring what, because well, this one only identifies as energy six, and well, it depends where I plug it in, what it's actually metering. So yeah, just a little tip. So yeah, uh, adding it to Home Assistant, we go into Home Assistant, go into Settings, and then into Integrations. If you have the ESP Home plugin installed, you can scroll down a little bit and you can hit the ESP Home Configuration button. There, you again enter the DNS name we used earlier. So that in my case, that's energy underscore 13 dot local. And we hit submit. Then it asks for a password. And once we enter that, it reads out all the information of the device. Now, mostly I have to refresh the page. But once that is done, it reads out everything this device has, including the button, the LEDs, voltage, amperage, uh, wattage me measurements, uh, and again, we can test using the button or setting the LEDs to see if that works. As the last part of this video, I'll show you how to make some uh, fancy graphs in Home Assistant, where you can combine some of the power meters to measure like a specific goal or something like that. Again, the code you need for this and the specific Lovelace card is linked in the blog article in the description. And if you copy and paste that, you just have to change the sensor values to the ones that you now have of your plugs and voila, you have a very nice graph. But to gain insight, I wanted more. And for that, I installed the Grafana add-on with InfluxDB, and I told Home Assistant to send all its sensor data to InfluxDB. And then I linked Grafana to InfluxDB, and now I can use the data that comes off of all of these plugs to make some nice graphs, like daily power usage, or actually cost calculations. But that will be the next video. So stay subscribed for that. And uh, thank you for watching. Questions are always welcome in the comments or you can join our Discord server. And um, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.